Welcome to this uh, DVD of some of my moon photographs taken over the last couple of years. Um, all taken in the garden with standard equipment, camera, video and telescope. You can get, of course, perfectly good images of the moon just with a normal camera. Here's one um, with uh, Venus in the bottom left corner that you can see there. And the next one we'll see is showing Earthshine. Earthshine is when the moon is new and the light from the Earth reflects off the moon and back onto the Earth. See that there? So there's a very thin crescent moon. And then if you expose it some more, you can begin to see the moon showing through. And then clearer, you can actually see detail on the moon there. How big is the moon? Well, it's about 2,160 miles in diameter, but five times smaller than the Earth. Uh, but at the distance that we're viewing it, 250,000 miles, m most people, when they see the moon, it's such an impressive sight, they think it's very big. Actually, if you hold your hand out, you can easily cover the full moon with your little finger. In fact, you could get two full moons uh, behind your little finger. It really is very small in terms of apparent size. People often think the full moon is the best uh, time to take uh, images of the moon, but actually it's the worst time because there's no shadow at all. And what you really want are shadows. And the best time for that is at half moon, which is what we'll see next. So here we have the moon. You can see a lot of detail at the top, mountain ranges, and at the bottom, uh, lots of craters. You can take images like this uh, just with a standard camera, video camera, so I advise you to give that a go if you've got that kind of equipment. Uh, but if you want to take it to the next level, you're going to need a telescope. Here's my one. Here's mine, a 10 inch Mead, absolutely beautiful instrument. Get a magnification of two, three hundred plus. You're out in all weathers, of course. Here we are in the winter. Okay, back to the half moon. This was taken with a standard camera with a long lens, a Nikon. And at the top you can see mountains. Now you could even get a result just by holding up a video camera down the eyepiece of the telescope, which is what we did here. as you can see it's not a very good result. It's wobbly uh, which is partly to do with the handheld camera and partly because the atmosphere um, makes everything appear wobbly anyway. But you can see the mountain range, you can see the shadows and some of the craters. Also you can take a standard camera, digital camera and hold that against the eyepiece and get some perfectly good images. The big crater at the top with a kind of stepped terrace-like wall, that's called Aristoteles. The other slightly smaller one below it is called Exodus. Uh, to give you some idea of the scale, Exodus is 41 miles in diameter, so you could fit all of London and the M25 inside the crater walls. You can see a large flat area to the left of the two big craters, just on the Terminator, and the Terminator is the bit where the dark and the light meet. Uh, on the flooded floor you can just make out two faint lines. The brighter one at 7 o'clock is called a scarp, which is a cliff face. This is produced by movement of the surrounding surface on the moon. Uh, there's a very faint one at 4 o'clock, which you can see, which is called a rill. The actual name of that is Rimmer Berg. It's a long, thin channel, maybe two miles across. They believe they're caused by flowing lava. Uh, it would make a tunnel underground, then the roof would collapse, leaving a very deep, uh, sharp valley. The next one is the Sea of Serenity. It's a huge flooded area, it's flooded with lava about 3.8 billion years ago. Uh, see the beautiful wrinkled ridge running down on the left side, it's called the Serpentine Ridge. Halfway down the ridge you can just make out a tiny crater at the top. That's about two and a half miles in diameter. Uh, the big crater on the Terminator is called Posidonius and you can just see the peak of its mountain catching the sun. So back to show you the um, complete moon again and then we're going to finally focus in on these three amazing craters together 
Uh, the huge crater in the centre is called Theophilus. It's one of the most impressive on the Moon. It's 62 miles in diameter and the ridge of the crater wall rises about 3,900 feet above the neighbouring landscape. Uh, it overlaps on another crater called Cyrillus, which is another huge crater, and you can see three mountains at the centre. The third crater is called Katharina, and all three you can easily see with binoculars at the right time. And then below the three of those craters is a scarp, which is called Rupes Altai. Uh, you can see the shadows cast by the cliff face, which is what a scarp is. So that's basically a 290 mile cliff running along the moon. And you may recognise those craters on the scarp because they're on the 4AOS card and on the website as well. To get better images than this, you need to do more than just take a photograph down the eyepiece you have to attach, um, it's basically like a webcam, and what this does is it takes multiple photographs, 10, 20, 30 at a time, and it stacks them in real time within um, the computer. And what that allows you to do is get a better result than you would get from any single image. So you might take maybe 50, 60, 70 images, and uh, the software will stack them in real time. Here's an example. This is the area of the moon we're looking at. And then this is several images stacked together. So this is a composite strip of four or five different images and each of those images will be made up of maybe 100 or 150 separate images stacked to make one sharp image. The interesting one here is you can see the, the, the mare, the sea, has flowed across, the lava has flowed into the crater below it, breaking down the wall. OK, another section of the moon. Right on the edge. You can see the craters are elongated because they're approaching the edge of the moon as we're looking at it. Uh, and you can see the individual craters named and it's always interesting to see how small a crater that you can actually image. And there's an example of quite a small one called Ursted. This looks like a video, but it's actually individual stills uh, put together as a movie. And you can see the problem is that they're constantly moving and through the atmosphere, everything's wobbling all the time. And if we stack hundreds of those images together, we get a much sharper image like this one here. This is perhaps 700 images all stacked together. Clavius itself is the third largest crater on the Moon. It's 140 miles across and it's got dozens of little tiny craters on its floor. Uh, and it's always a challenge to see which is the smallest crater you can see. The one in blue is called Dulek W, it's about four miles wide, and there's a smaller one to the left which is around two miles across, which is getting towards the limit of what's possible with this kind of equipment. Okay, the next uh, two craters we're going to look at, again two of the most famous on the moon, The small one is called Eratosthenes, and then the very large one to the left is called Copernicus. Copernicus is another very ancient crater. You, you can see multiple layers of the terraced walls uh, catching the sunlight there, debris all around it.
these splash marks uh, result from the debris from the original impact spraying out hundreds of miles across the surface of the moon and in the corner there you can see a very tiny crater just a couple of miles across there's something else interesting near Copernicus this was taken a day or two later when it was completely filled with sunlight but in the corner here We have the Hortensius dome field. These are volcanic domes, very difficult to capture. They're very small, uh, not very high off the off the surface, so difficult to get any um, cast, get them to cast any shadow at all. But managed to capture the three of them there in a line. And this is the Apennine mountain range, perhaps the most impressive on the surface of the moon. Zooming in, you can see where Apollo 15 landed, and in the corner we have Rimmer Bradley, another one of these collapsed tubes. This is perhaps just a mile or two in diameter and running alongside the mountain. And here we have the Lunar Alps. You can see the valley at the top, 130 kilometres long, perhaps five miles wide. And then you see my favourite feature on the moon. And there's Piton, my favourite feature on the moon. Triangular shaped mountain rising up from the flat lava fields around it. And are marked in there two very small craters, just four kilometres and five kilometres across. This image is too separate images stitched together and each of those were around 300 images stacked so there's perhaps 600 separate photographs to make up this one image it's the southern mountainous highland area of the moon and it's got two special features the Valles Rahita which is the second largest valley on the moon about 500 kilometers long and the Janus Rill which is a highland rill in other words um, a mountainous collapsed lava tube The main crater here is about 177 kilometres wide, with double terraced walls, and it looks elongated again because it's near the limb of the moon. Uh, the smallest crater is only about 10 kilometres here because the seeing was quite poor, was quite, um, the atmosphere was, was uh, quite wobbly. You could just make out there the rill, Rimmer Patavius, which is like a long thin scratch inside Patavius. And finishing off with Sinus Iridium, a very large crater where the lava has broken the walls down and you can just make out where the walls would have been. 